up you guys um it's Nadja here and I'm back with another video so obvious thing in the room scenery has changed um I'm still working on lighting and stuff so if it goes in and out I'm gonna try to edit it as best as I possibly can but basically today um is going to be a story time and I did kind of make it off as like a story time movie but I kind of just want to get away from like the title of story time if that makes any sense like I'd rather it just be like I'm telling you a story but I'm still gonna put it in the title just so that you guys know like this is it this is just gonna be a very long story and that's why I call it a story time movie because it is going to be so long that you might as well just be watching this on Netflix like a freaking movie as you guys can see I'm a short ass person that's why this is it's hard for me to get up here like I'm super short but hopefully you guys could see all of me okay basically this is just me explaining like why I moved and like why I moved so sudden and like what's going on with that and like some of you guys are like damn sis you move like every day which is not true by the way this is the first time I've ever broken a lease in my life like I don't be hip hopping bopping bopping all over the place like this is the first time that I've actually broken a lease I'm just gonna shed light on that and I'm just gonna go like way 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 back to the situation and like why the thumbnail is what it is like I know you guys are probably like what the fuck happened and no that is not clickbait that's not photoshop that's actually real so I'm just gonna get right on into it if you like my videos please give this video a big thumbs up and if this message would be useful to somebody that you know in your personal life you can go ahead and send them this video so they know that they're not alone in this situation so okay so oh my god we're about to go like way way back bitch like what three years ago back this just feels so weird even talking about this because like I've kind of like trained myself to not talk about it like it's so weird even like I'm actually sitting in front of this camera and talking about it I never thought that I would share this with YouTube and like the main thing is, is like, I know that there are some people out there because I am so like non-problematic and I don't really get into shit with people on the internet and like, you know, I don't really have any drama. I don't have any drama in my life right now. Like, I'm pretty much like a boring ass YouTube bitch, to be honest. Like, I, I really don't have anything going on currently in my life and I know that drama does sell and stuff like that. So a lot of people do think that like maybe I'm like high and mighty or like I'm some special snowflake bitch or like you get what I'm saying like and it's that's like far from the truth like like there's this one thing I was hoping like would not get out and I just feel like now that I'm in a position where I can't talk about it I'd rather talk about it than continue to be like okay well nobody needs to know you get what I'm saying and like well it's irrelevant now because I really don't have to be telling you guys a story like I could just I could have just went on with doing me and you guys would have never known so it's just like eh, whatever right so basically back in 2016 Daniel and I met when Daniel and I met, um, he was, ooh, child, I'm about to break it all the way down, y'all. I'm about to break it all the way fucking down. First off rip. when I met Daniel, me and Daniel were in completely different places in life. Like, Daniel was very financially stable. He had money. He had his own shit going on. He had his own car. I did not have a car. I was not as financially stable. I was an emotional wreck. Like, I was over here trying to pick up baggage for other people. Meanwhile, my life is fucked up. Like, the, it was, we were just comp on completely two different spectrums of life when we met each other. Um, he did tell me that he had a uh, criminal past or whatever off rip because, like, he at once a month he would have to check in with his probation officer and stuff. So I was like, okay. I don't have a problem with that like you get because I you guys know me by now I don't judge people for their past or anything like that so I'm I'm pretty easy to talk to when it comes to stuff like that like I'm not going to judge you so like when we first started dating he would have to check in with um, his probation officer and he did live with his mom because of that but the reason why I'm pretty sure the reason why he was living with his mom is because him and his mom both had the um same job at one point okay whatever I'm and that's another thing I'm really trying not to tell 
Daniel's business at all because there is going to he's going to drop his own video and I really hope that you guys watch um his first and then watch mine like I'm gonna get to a point in the video where I'm gonna be like okay well now pause this part and then go look at his video um because and then come back to this one so that it'll like make a little bit more sense because you guys know me I do not tell other people's stories on this channel I feel like all I could do is show my perspective or like my hearsay and I just feel like it'd be more appropriate if he told his side of his own story. So scratch all that other shit I just said. I'll probably just like blur it out or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, so that's what was going on when we met. Now, some things happened where he made a bad decision and he failed a drug test, right? So he failed the drug test. And for like the whole of 2016, like he was a completely different person than the person that I met like for example like we were both so now it went from him being financially stable and on his shit and being responsible to and me being emotionally unstable to me being emotionally unstable and financially un well not yet okay so it was me being emotionally unstable and then him being emotionally unstable and also financially unstable now because of him um uh what is it called I don't want to say breaking his probation, but like uh, violating his probation. He ended up, he couldn't do his job, which was Uber because he was, and I'm just going to be completely 100 because all this shit is old. He did not want to go back to jail because he had been to jail previously and he's like, bro, I'm not fucking going back. So he couldn't do Uber anymore because he would, if he was driving around, driving people around and a cop pulled him over, then he would go to jail. So he couldn't do anything and like, you know, the cops were constantly at his mom's house, stuff like that. So he would come and stay with me every once in a while. And then that's when that whole roommate situation with my BFF from my ex BFF thing, how she was just like, oh, he's over here all the time. He's over here all the time. But he was doing other things to get money at that time that was providing for the household, such as like um, getting food and, you know, driving me to work. He would even drive my roommate to work sometimes and like. It was just really hard because even like right now it's hard for me to talk about it because I don't want to say too much of his business that he doesn't want to be on the internet but basically he was on the run and he would come and stay at my house every once in a while sometimes he would sleep in his car because he did not want he knew my my old roommate was so overbearing and was so like oh my god like if he's gonna live here he needs to pay rent and I, and I would and I even told her I was just like well if he were to pay rent because he'd be in my room, he would be paying half of my rent and you'd still be paying your whole rent for your room. Like, but she just wasn't getting that. She was like, no, we need to spread, split rent three ways. And I'm like, well, that's not fair because he doesn't have his own bedroom. Like, you get what I'm saying? He, so he didn't want to come off that way so there would be nights where he would sleep in his car and then like come into my apartment and take showers and stuff because he also we also did not tell my roommate the situation and that I will completely own up that was a no-no on my part because I would not want somebody living in my house knowing that they're on the fucking run and like I don't know about it because then that's you at risk and just knowing that will probably put some puzzle pieces together for you guys um for the xbff story time movie because did i want to beat that bitch ass hell yeah but is that was that the type of bitch that will call the cops fuck yeah and i didn't want to be the reason why he got locked up like there were so many things that i wanted to like 2016 was hell for me and it's not because of him because I loved him you know it wasn't that it was just it was hell because I wanted to do so much like and it's probably the best that I didn't but I wanted to do so much more but I felt like my hands were tied behind my back like I couldn't do what I wanted to do because if I popped off and I acted an ass and the cops came to our house like he would be gone and then I would possibly be gone for harboring his ass in the house so it was just like a constant I can't I can't do this you get what I'm saying that is why 
that is where like things started where he was just like you know on the run or whatever so finally it came to a point where he was and then he was in contact with his lawyer for like throughout this whole thing so it came to a point where um he actually was like you know what fuck it i'm about to turn myself in get this shit over with and you know let's see what what they're talking about or whatever right by the grace of god daniel literally walked in to jail and then walk the fuck out for whatever reason he was able to get bond and i know in some places you can't get bond and um for a, a violation or whatever but because of the county that it was in he did and it was crazy because the same night that he left was ironic no the the same morning that he left was the same night that scorpio moved into my apartment so i was like just a wreck like i was so depressed and i was just like damn like this sucks like I'm never gonna see him again type shit like I didn't know when well not never but I just didn't know when I was gonna see him again and like I was also emotional because I had just cut off all of these toxic people in my life and stuff like that so it's like I just felt very vulnerable and alone and then I had Scorpio move in a complete stranger to help me pay the bills or whatever and that night you know he made me like this big ass meal and blah 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 and then Daniel called me and told me the news like hey I'm coming back home but this time you know i'm not on the run like i'm fine like i can go stay at my mom's house now and i don't have to be all up in your space i don't have to be a burden anymore and that's another thing that like my old roommate libra always used to be like oh he's such a bum and he's mooching off of you and blah 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 but it's just like there was a point where he had money and i didn't have shit and you didn't have shit either and he came in and he helped us out and got us on our feet to get us that apartment and it's just like that was something that really irritated me how like she made it seem like this was just a bum mooching off me when like he was putting groceries in the fridge he was driving you to work he was driving me to work he was actually out getting money whether it was legal or not to come and provide for the home that he would crash in and if he couldn't provide something he would go sleep in his car like it wasn't like that at all and that's why I kind of like I don't know and it just sucked because I could not say what was really going on so I could see how from her perspective it would look like that because I couldn't just flat out and be like look this is what's going on and this is xyz and blah 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 like you get what I'm saying but I just knew the type of person she was is that she she would call the police like she would she would call the ops or whatever but at the same time I I will take full responsibility that was a no-no on my part for not letting somebody else that is on the lease of my apartment know 100% of what's going on because I would want to know so boom you know he gets out and then I finish he once he gets out he just stays at his mom's house and then it's just me but every once in a while he would come and stay with me like because he would only have to check in once a month so he would come and stay with me maybe like a few days out of the week and stuff like that and then you know when my third roommate Scorpio moved in he pretty much moved in and you know um Scorpio not Scorpio vegan once vegan moved in and Scorpio moved out then you know Daniel was pretty much living there at the apartment with me and um at this point he was searching for jobs and stuff like that because apparently um court case blew over I think they just added um a few more years to his probation if, if I'm sure and he gets off of probation next year so they just added on a few more years he would have been off like a couple years ago so he got off really lucky but the only thing that happened from that is that he had to register as a felon and he did not have to do that before he got his stuff um wiped off so that was something that was also like really hard and like i remember there was this video where i was talking about my old co-worker at ratchet corp who um uh was a felon and she what had like felony shoplifting charges and stuff like that and i was and i said in the video like if you are a retail store why would you hire somebody a felon that has a felony shoplifting charge like we hire felons now like i made it a joke but somebody in the comments genuinely got offended and was like look my husband's a felon and like it's not fair that there's this stigma against them blah 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 and i want it so bad to just be like sis trust me i would never I would never come off that like I well I don't know maybe I obviously I did come off that way because she made that comment but I would never be like oh you're a felon you're a bad person because little do you know I'm dealing with my own situation with somebody I love who also has that label on them I was just saying like for example um uh if you have a felony gun charge 
maybe it's not the best to hire this person at a gun store because they will violate like you get what I'm saying it's just like certain things like that I wasn't saying it like oh all fell and steel like you get what I'm saying but yeah it was just little things like that like that I so really badly wanted to tell you guys but at the same time I couldn't and we're gonna get into why I could not I'm just trying to wrap everything together okay so this is the point where if you want to go and go to daniel's channel and see watch his video and hear his side of the story on like like what his felonies are for um and everything like that and like how he deals with it today and um xyz because he did he did find a job or whatever that does hire felons at um, a rehabilitation center and he you know is a rehab tech or it guy there and you know he does his thing but yeah, so, you know, he got a job and stuff, but that's not where like the problem is because obviously this video is about moving. So we're going to get into that. But if you want to go and see um, what he got in trouble for, how he's coping with it, um, maybe some inspirational advice for anybody out there that might be in his predicament that is having a hard time finding a job, having a hard time finding housing, go on his page and watch his video and leave him a comment and he will answer your question as best he can, I'm sure. So yeah, go pause it and go back over there. All right, you're back. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> okay, so after um, we moved out of the apartment with Vegan, uh, we needed like a little intermediate period because it was like he had, Daniel had just gotten his job at um, the rehab place and um, we both needed time to save up money because I wasn't doing YouTube. All I had was a $12 an hour job at Ratchet Corp and he had his job and we both needed to save up and when you live in paycheck to paycheck like you need to save up you know so we started we moved into my grandma's house which was supposed to be temporary we ended up staying there for like six months and the whole time i didn't i and again because i didn't like i already told everybody before i got on the internet and started talking about it like i already told everybody so i don't want it to be like you know anybody surprised about it but i'm still going to take ownership and the fact that I should have told my grandma about the situation fully. I don't know why I was so scared as if she wouldn't let us stay because that's just not the type of person my grandma is but just out of respect for her home I should have told her. But the thing was is that me and Daniel weren't on her lease and we already shouldn't have been there so I just assumed like well shit we're not supposed to be here anyway so fuck it I'm not gonna tell her. So boom. We ended up staying there for six months and like the that is when I started doing YouTube like the beginning of that time because now I was like okay I am out of that apartment all of those toxic vibes like are gone I could be creative let me just do YouTube as like a fun thing to do when I get off of work or whatever so I would do I would film YouTube in our bedroom and then I started getting a little bit more income and I just put it aside right so at this point I was only making a thousand dollars a month on YouTube like nothing crazy like nothing I could live off of I was doing YouTube for a whole year until I left Ratchet Corp so that my assets money would actually be a livable wage like and yes I don't know why um but I I just didn't feel I just didn't want to be one of those people that was like okay let me quit for YouTube like no I actually needed to make sure that I could live so you know something happened i think we had like an argument me and my grandma had like an argument or something over something so petty it was so petty I, I think she was on the phone with somebody and um they we okay me and daniel came back from a um party um well one of his family's parties and i had been drinking so we walk in the house and you know daniel was like hey how are you doing miss sharon whatever and i didn't say anything because i'm i'm kind of toasty i just want to go into the shower and go into the bed so we both go into the room and you know I'm taking off my jacket or whatever and then my grandma just comes in and she's just like you're just not even gonna say hey to me and blah 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 and then she's talking to Daniel talking about Daniel did she say hey to me did you hear her say hey to me and Daniel's just in the corner like uh I don't think so and I'm just like Daniel really but yeah it was so stupid and like I literally went on a walk and I was like we're getting the fuck out of here dude like how much money do you have saved up we're getting the fuck out of here because the only reason why it took us so long to get out is because I was really adamant on trying to find a place that would let Daniel be on the lease like I wanted him to be on the lease I, I wanted him to you know build up his credit I wanted him to be as equally responsible as I was with the apartment on paper as much as he was off of paper because 
he was splitting shit with me 50 50 like even when we were in the first apartment with um libra he was splitting everything with me 50 50 just not with her 50 50 and just not with scorpio 50 50 like you get what i'm saying like you're sleeping in my room using my bathroom like we're like no so you know that is what was hard because every nowhere would accept him on the application we wasted a good chunk of money getting denied places because of daniel's conviction not being expunged like it was just blatant like so it was really hard so then i was like you know what? i'm gonna try to go to some realtors and just go private that was hard as well because nobody wants to unless you have a hookup nobody wants a felon living in their house even if they're doing the right thing they're going to work their their po visits them every month like it doesn't matter like they just don't want that in the neighborhood i guess it depreciates it i don't know but It was just hard so i was like you know what we don't have a i i can't be living with my grandma anymore like i can't do it like i'm ready i just did a year on my own not having to answer to anybody like i'm grown right here i need to go so i was like you know what i'm just gonna get an apartment in my name and you can pay me cash and we'll just do it that way so literally a week after the argument with my grandma we moved into this neighborhood and this neighborhood was like very close to my grandma's neighborhood because at the same time I wanted to check up on her. I didn't want her to be lonely, but I just couldn't be under that roof anymore, especially with my man. Like I just can't do it. So, you know, um, we moved into this place and it was fairly, it was nice, but it was just really small. And honestly, that apartment was one of my favorite apartments because it was so like, like the neighbors weren't perfect like i had it was a nice neighborhood but the neighbors weren't perfect like you had working class people working there but you know one of the working class ladies would just sit on her patio in her work uniform and drink a beer or like you know like just stuff like that like it wasn't uppity as the place i just left which we're about to get into but it, it wasn't as hood as the first apartment i moved into and it wasn't as uppity as the one i just left like it was a good intermediate there really wasn't any there was no kids in the neighborhood for real it was just working class people you know when i applied for the apartment i did have to use my ratchet corp income as well as my youtube income because with just my ratchet corp income i did not meet the requirements to move into the place but i knew that with daniel's income it would have went like if they would have let us apply with him it would have went through we ended up moving in and things were awesome like that it was an awesome environment you know daniel said hey to the neighbors neighbors said hey to him the people at the leasing office would see daniel there all the time but they did not say anything because my rule of thumb and i know it's not everybody's obviously because here we are is if you're getting your money if you're getting your coin if you're getting your check who the fuck cares like who cares like it'd be different if like now this is my only thing it'd be different if somebody was convicted of a sexual crime or a violent crime then i'm like okay sir like you might not need to get that house by the freaking elementary school like you might not need to, like no like you get what i'm saying but if people are just minding their own fucking business we're coming to and from work every day like we're paying the bills leave us the fuck alone and that neighborhood did a very good job of that so as the um lease is ending you know they asked if we want to renew and i was like no because now at this point i had quit ratchet corp and i was being able to afford um paying my share of the rent by myself so i was like no i don't want to uh, renew my lease i'd rather get a and plus that place was fairly cheap i think that place was only like um like a thousand a month for a one bedroom like it was very cheap water was included we had a trash service wooden floors washer and dryer like it was one bedroom one bathroom and like a patio it was a thousand a month on a good side of town like it was very cheap for two to split between two people not bad at all so oh my first apartment was about um eight hundred dollars a month for a two bedroom two master bathroom and a laundry room but it was in the hood that's why it was so cheap for all that shit okay bitch so oh yeah there might be some vaping in this video because I'm, I'm talking for a minute this is gonna be a long ass video bitch I'm but you know what i want to move somewhere that's bigger now there's the neighborhood that i moved to we're gonna call them bougieville so no better yet no we're not gonna call them bougieville we're gonna call it retirement living so <laughs> retirement living i had actually 
emailed like when before I moved into the the one bedroom I had emailed them before I even submitted an application because me and Daniel were tired of wasting so much money on these application fees just for it to be taken and for us to be denied so I emailed them at retired retired living and I was like hey um my boyfriend is a convicted felon nonviolent crime um both of our incomes combined are would we would get approved I just want to know like if we could get a, a place here because I don't want to spend money if you're just going to deny us the person emailed me back and was just like yeah unfortunately it's a no it's a no-go right so this time around I was making even more money on YouTube and I was like okay well we deserve a nice place you get what I'm saying and Daniel was making more money too so I was like we deserve a nice place like more space office space so you could record your music I could record my videos like and and it would be a nice tax break like you get what I'm saying so yeah um we were like let's try this place I'm gonna apply and see what happens because I knew I already had a paper trail with them from when I first contacted them so I was like I already had an end game in my head like well if they ask I'm gonna just be like um oh we broke up or something like that so you know I go there I get approved that place wanted you to make three times the freaking rent and the um rent there was about thirteen hundred dollars a month no water included um it did have a washer and dryer two bedrooms two bath and a large patio a fireplace you guys saw the fucking apartment but yeah so it was a little high but at the same time you know it was nice it was quiet it was close to daniel's job like it was gucci so i had the place or whatever and we move in oh and it had a garage also that's kind of important it has a garage so you know Daniel I would have Daniel park his car in the garage and I would park my car like a little bit far away from the building because I don't really go out that much and when we do we mainly take Daniel's car um but yeah like it really wasn't and plus it's not like I have to go to work every day like you have to go to work five days out the week so and there were no fucking parking spots in this neighborhood like I'm about to go in on the ass in a second but there were no parking spots in this fucking neighborhood absolutely fucking zero like it was literally if you had more than one car which people who lived in those type of neighborhoods tend to do you're fucked you're gonna be driving around a circle or you're gonna be parked away in the fucking boonies somewhere like far away from your house like it, it was a hot ass mess yeah i was like well you have to go to work so i'm not gonna um you know make you walk all the way wherever the fuck and then plus you had to register your car with the office so obviously that'd be a dead ass giveaway so we would put his car in the garage and we moved in everything was fucking cool like it was a cool ass spot it was gorgeous like we loved it and um it was fairly quiet no the office never came to me about anything like everything was cool so then this man moves in below us there used to be an old lady below us and then they moved out so this man moves in and I'm pretty sure you guys will remember this man from the story time I did about how my neighbor confronted me about being too loud. If you've never seen that, you might want to go see it. All of these videos, I'm going to be putting links in the comments and I'm going to pin the comment because every time I say I'm going to do it in the description, I forget to do it. But it's easier for me in the comments if I like just copy paste, copy paste and then pin it. So I'm going to put that video in the comments in case you guys did not see it. But... Just to summarize, I'm going to pause right here, go click on it and go watch it if you want to. But just to summarize for the people who have, who don't feel like watching the whole thing, um, I advise you to though. But that man would, because we ended up getting a dog and the dog, my dog was a puppy and she would prance around. Okay, from the get go, the floors were not concreted before they put the laminate of the wood on top. So it was very, very like light to the touch when it came to walking around and shit right so even before we had the dog before we had Spody, i noticed how light it was while i was walking because i saw the reviews online so i was like okay they say that um it's creaky i'm not gonna get a downstairs apartment because in the last place in the one bedroom we had a neighbor that would eight town fucking stomp on our heads but of course, we're not the type of people to go up and complain because this isn't a house. This is a fucking apartment. Like, I'm not about to go and bitch and moan at you over an apartment. Like, the fuck? Oh, and plus, that dude was a cop. I'm not about to go up to knock on a cop's door and be like, shut the fuck up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially because I had Daniel in the apartment, so I can't be drawing too much attention to myself.
basically um this dude would bang on the ceiling and shit and i was like okay look we need to be very mindful we need to keep spody locked up um at like late hours and very early hours because this dude could potentially be a problem and it's so crazy and i don't like to think that like I thunk it into existence it's just I have a I have a bitch of an intuition like I literally as soon as the first bang that we got on the ceiling I was like this motherfucker is gonna be the one like he's gonna be the one like it's gonna happen because think guys we've been going three years we've been going for three years with Daniel being able to just pay me money in my hand and then we go and pay for rent under my name even though it's both of our money we've been doing that for three years and nothing has ever happened and now we got this dude banging on the ceiling and the type of neighborhood that it was where people like to call the police if they see a black dude walking around at night nah like i just had this gut feeling like he is going to be the one he's going to be the problem like i just knew i we stuck to that where we were like okay spody is only allowed to be out of her cage at like noon to like four which sucks because she's a baby and like i'm paying rent i had to pay four hundred dollars pet deposit for her and i had to pay 20 bucks a month well we had to pay 20 bucks a month for spody to live there so i'm paying rent for my dog and my dog can't even be in the apartment for real because of this dude basically um he had um kept banging on the door kept banging on kept banging on the ceiling or whatever for like little shit like say if daniel's niece came over she's a baby she's like just turned one years old she just she's trying to learn she at the time she was trying to learn how to walk so like she would crawl and then stand up on and hold on to something and maybe like flop down on her butt or like her like kick her feet on the floor or whatever she's a baby this dude boom 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 and it's just like bruh like you were literally walking on eggshells because and it's like every time somebody would come over to my apartment, I would just be like so paranoid because I'm like, oh my God, what if they're too loud and this guy gets upset, like blah, blah, blah. Like you get what I'm saying? So I would just get even more and more paranoid. When Spody got all her shots and stuff and she was allowed to go outside, there would be times where Daniel would walk her before work or sometimes Daniel would walk her without me. And I think that may have set off some red flags as well because he was by himself and he was just walking around and stuff and people were probably just like what the fuck and i remember oh this is another thing when we first moved into the neighborhood and um spody was a puppy when we first got spody and we didn't know that she wasn't supposed to be outside yet there was this old woman that went up to daniel and was like hey um what kind of dog is she and you know he made small talk and she was like oh okay yeah what apartment are you in and daniel said our actual apartment number and he came home and it was actually me him and his mom were at our apartment and he came home and he was just like yo like I'm just letting y'all know what happened like it just slipped out and I just remember being so upset with him and I was just like why the fuck would you do that like you know how these people are like it's it's over like I already know that it's done it's done but turns out nothing happened for months because that dude like literally that happened like maybe the second month that we moved in and it was Gucci, like nothing happened from that from that old lady. But as soon as that dude moved in, that's when I noticed little weird shit. Like, for example, there would be more um, old people because like how the shit is set up is it's like it's your front door, but you have like a patio for your front door. And then you also have a patio in the back. So it's like you could like set up lawn chairs next to your front door, even if you're on the second floor and look onto the street. So ever since Brad moved in. I've noticed slowly that more people like older people would come out and sit on the on their shit at different hours of the day almost as if they were taking fucking shifts because the majority of the people in retirement living do not work they're old people they don't work like they are just on some some awesome checks like they're just chilling I started noticing that and I'm like okay that's weird and especially this one older man who would just sit outside on the um the little porch area smoking a cigarette and he was in a no smoking building mind you and yes we did have those like ours was a no smoking building which makes no sense to me because it's like bitch what you gonna do call the smoking police like what the fuck anyway 
So I noticed this dude would be at the Nautilus smoking building, smoking a cigarette and just watching the street. And it's weird because like even when the older people would take shifts, that dude would be there every fucking time I came outside. And I'm, which is rare when I would come outside because you guys know I work from home. Like, so I was just like, okay, that's weird. But I didn't think anything of it because I'm like, hey, maybe dude is just old people chilling. Like, it is what it is. You know, dude still banging on the ceiling and shit for, for little stupid shit. It came to the point where I would wear slippers in the house and socks in the house to try to make it not as bad. But it really didn't matter. Like, it was just... He was just gonna bang regardless on the freaking door. Like, it just, it just felt like I wasn't living, like, if that makes sense. It felt like I was paying to live in a stranger's house, if that makes sense. Like, it just sucked. And then the whole paranoia with the Daniel situation, it was just a lot. One day, the day, oh my god, it was the day after my wisdom teeth surgery. My wisdom teeth surgery was on February the 1st. And it was the day after my wisdom teeth surgery. And I literally woke up to my dog barking in a way I have never heard her bark before. Like, just as, she was barking as if somebody actually came into my house. Like, I, till this day, I've never heard her bark like that before. And it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm still high off the fucking Percocets because my fucking wisdom teeth. So it's 7 in the morning. I'm still high off the Percs. And like I get up and I'm like, what are you barking about? And I always do this thing with her to let her know like, hey, it's okay. Nobody's outside. Is, you know, I look through the people and I'll open the door and I'll show her like, hey, you know, look, nobody's outside. But good girl, that's what we want you to do. We want you to alert us if something's off. So as I opened the door, I saw an envelope with a rubber band tied up around it actually i still have the letter hold on i'll show you what was in it actually have like a whole packet of all of these like files and stuff right so it says it has come to our attention that you are housing one or more people in your apartment you are the only occupant for this apartment that is on the lease as said in your lease, no one else may occupy the apartments. Persons not listed above must not stay in the apartment for more than one consecutive days without prior written consent and no more than twice that many days in any month. Y'all, when I read that, like, I'm a, okay, hold on. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish reading. But there's a lot of things in here that we need to talk about. So... All adults 18 years of age and older must complete an application, pay the $100 application fee, and be approved per blank company policies. Please come to the office no later than Saturday, February 2nd to do so. So get this shit, right? Get this shit. Strategically, I pay rent on the 1st. I, I set up an automatic payment because I knew I was going to be loopy as fuck. Daniel gave me the money um, the day before the 1st. Put it in my account and then, you know, I pay for it on the portal to do an auto pay for the first. So you motherfuckers wait until we give you our money. Then you send me this shit talking about I need to be here on the second, a.k.a. today. What the fuck? So once I got that, I just walked into the bedroom and I was like, Daniel, look at this. Because I'm high. So it's not really clicking to me what the fuck's going on. I'm high, right? So I show him the paper and he was just like, oh my god, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, because you got to think, like, this is the day that we've all kind of been, like, anticipating and dreading at the same fucking time. So it's just like, it's happening. Like, this is real life now. Like, it's happening. And what are we going to do? And the, our first instinct was to just pack all his shit up. So we just started packing all of his shit up. And he got all his bags and I was like what are you about to do he was like I'm about to go to my mom's house and I was like okay cool so he gets in the car and he goes to his mom's house and you know I just lay back in bed because I'm I'm high as a fucking kite like I I'm processing what's going on but I'm still not really processing I took some more pain medicine and ate some applesauce and I went back to sleep so when I woke up from the sleep Daniel came back into the house and um just told me that um, I think, I don't remember if he came back with his mom or if he came back, no, he did come back with his mom. Okay, so I was like in and out of sleep. I'm sorry, it's like really foggy because uh, your girl was fucked up. But I remember he was calling me and he was telling me to review the paper and to review my lease. So I picked up my lease because something that was like really bothering me was that it said 
no one else may occupy the apartments persons not list above might must not stay in the apartment for more than one consecutive days without prior written consent so i was like that can't be right i look at my lease bitch yes the fuck it, it like y'all that's what i was saying in that past video like y'all have to read your lease because every other lease i've signed was always like if you have somebody in your house for more than a week let us know or if you have somebody in your house for more than a um 14 days let us know that's my situation right now if it's more than 14 days i have to let my landlord know so they said one day bitch so if i wanted to have my homegirl spend the night i would have to get her id go up to the office and get a written consent form as if i'm living in a fucking college dorm when in reality i'm living in a retirement home with all these old ass snitches so i really do feel and that's so okay so that's one i'm not gonna get ahead of myself so that's one and it says that i have to get him on the lease and i'm just like well obviously y'all aren't gonna prove him for the lease so what the fuck am i supposed to do so i'm just going all over my lease like i was just studying it and then i was like you know i'm about to lay my ass down and go to fucking bed but it's so funny because before I continue, I'm going to read you a review that somebody actually put on my old neighborhood. And it just gave me, I don't know if it gave me relief or if it just made me be like, okay, so it wasn't just me. Because this happened to her the same time it happened to me and they did the same shit to her. Like, hold on, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you guys. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, she literally posted this two weeks ago, which is the same exact time frame when they did this shit to me. I have been living, me and Daniel have been living in that apartment for six months. I know some of you guys like to be like, oh, you were only there for a little bit. We were there for six months, bitch. It's not like we moved in and for, at to the two month mark and they were like, all right, bitch, I noticed you got a nigga in here. Like, no, we were living there for six months giving them our money for six months and then this dude moves in downstairs and now like literally when did I make that video about the about our dog I don't know maybe it was like uh two months ago a month ago I'm not really sure but in that time span it's very interesting how the, now it's happening because I what I feel like happened is he probably went to the office and was like hey I, you know that couple that lives above me they're very loud and the lady was probably like couple there's only supposed to be one person there and then they probably sent out a kite to the other um old people to kind of watch the neighborhood watch to look and then xyz abc but anyway here's a girl and she has a very same predicament so i'm gonna read it really fast for you before i continue she says my partner lives in this complex complex and has been since november the 1st 2008 i moved in in august 20 of uh, august not 2008 bitch i'm talking too fast she said november 1st 2018 i moved in august 1st 2018 to start, everything was non-functional. The washer and dryer, they attempted to fix them three times. Um, I'm going to sell out about my apartment once I'm done telling the story, but whatever. Okay. They attempted to fix them three times, took three weeks to fix it, then finally agreed to replace them. The water in the entire apartment's reeks of sulfur, including the whole apartment area outside from the irrigation. Second, the master bedroom window leaked from move-in, got replaced, leaked worse than finally got properly fixed third and third third of all and this is the kicker and this is why i'm reading this to you do not live here if you have someone that occasionally spends the night i have my own apartment i reside in four to five times throughout the week i stay with my partner roughly two days a week he received a letter saying verbatim no one else may occupy the apartment persons not listed must not stay in the apartment for more than one consecutive i already read that to you guys they literally do not allow you to have anyone stay at your home here, even if they have their own residence. He is now threatened with eviction unless I become a part of the lease. Background check, $100 fee and will be a leaseholder. Ridiculously crazy. Do not move in if you want a boyfriend slash girlfriend staying with you. You're better off just living in a college dorm. So this happened two weeks ago. So that lets me know like they it wasn't just us. It was more so like in like you get what I'm saying, but if that dude wouldn't have been that way then it probably would not have escalated i just feel like once they put out that kite for the neighborhood watch to watch for stuff like that i'm pretty sure other people with a similar situation it happened to them too and i guarantee you whoever that was lived in an upstairs apartment daniel and his mom come over come back from daniel's mom's house and they have like a completely different attitude like they have a very chipper 
type attitude because apparently before Daniel left he took a picture of this and sent it to his mom and his, his mom is actually um, a realtor she's in real estate so her mom his mom and um, her boss was looking over the paper she sent it to her boss like look at this shit like what the fuck is going on with this so you know they came back to the house in a much chipper mood I was a little bit off the meds still but still a little bit coherent my jaw was like bitch it was swole like I was and I just looked like I just had surgery the day before. Like, I did not have time for this shit. Like, it was just very inconvenient. So his mom was basically was like, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do all the talking for you because you just had surgery yesterday. And um, just come with me. We're going to go to the office together. And um, we're just going to talk about our options of what, we're, what we can do. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we went up to the office. And the girl, um, the lady at the leasing office or whatever, she was cool but basically what we were just like okay what what can we do to, to you know move forward because it's basically this basically what she said was this shit was kind of like a notice but not an eviction notice like how i just read that review they gave her an eviction notice i didn't get no eviction notice this was just a warning okay so sorry if things are like a little bit moved around um i had to charge my camera it was dying Daniel's mom and I went to the office to go and talk to the leasing office lady and basically asked her like, yo, like, what are we about to do? How are we going to move on from this? Like, basically, we're not trying to say this isn't going on. We're trying to say, how can we move on from the situation? Like, whether it be I just break my lease and leave and that's it. Or are you guys going to hit me with an eviction? Like, what's going on? And like I said previously, she was like, no, this isn't like an eviction notice or anything. Like, this is just somebody in the neighborhood has been watching you guys and let us know. So we had to let you know because that's in violation of the lease. So she was just like, well, you know, we you can put him on the lease. And Daniel's mom was like, no, that's not possible because he's a felon. You guys would not let him live there. And she was like, oh, no, actually, in October, we started letting um, felons live here as long as it's not a violent or a sexual crime. Thing with Daniel's um, charge is, is that it was not a violent crime, but it does have to do with guns. So it's like a very gray area as well as he did it when he was young. So that's another thing that would have helped if we were to put him on the lease. But because it has something to do with guns, it was very gray. Like we didn't know if we did put him on the lease, would he get approved or if he would get rejected. And then we just spent more money on an application fee and then more money on another month of rent just to find out that, you know, we had to move someplace else anyway. So, you know, she gave me this stuff. She gave me um, a lease contract in case he wanted to be on the lease. And she also gave me, what else? Oh, that's it. Well, she gave me a lease contract and she gave me a notice to vacate paper, which they obviously have because I have moved. Yeah, so I went home and, you know, me and Daniel talked about it. I was like, well, look, they said that they'll let you live here if you get on the lease or whatever because your offense isn't violent or sexual so you should be able to but again like it was like very gray and me and daniel kind of were on the same page where it's like we already didn't like living there because of our neighbors and like it just didn't feel like home like our dog couldn't do what she wanted to do and like we're paying rent for the dog she can't do what she want to do and like it just was like it was almost like it was a bad thing but a good thing could come out of it and you guys know my 2019 so far has been trash.com like trash trash dumpster.com dumpster.org bitch like you guys know it has not been great um i was sick multiple times um had to get surgery um and then this happened all within two months of the new year all of this shit happened so I was just like you know what maybe this is that light out of the tunnel ahead of the tunnel and like this is a sign that you know we can go and do what we want to do because this is the thing Daniel's mom's boss because you know they're in real estate did have a property open and they were the exact type of people who Daniel and I were trying to go through when we were at my grandma's house trying to find realtors that would let us lease but the thing was when we moved into um 
Dan my grandma's house, Daniel's mom had just gotten the job. So it, she didn't really have any perks yet. So at that point, she had been at that job for like a year. When this like when all this happened, she had been working there for maybe like a year and a half. So she had perks like she could actually make shit happen. Whereas before she couldn't. So that day when it happened, Daniel's mom um, hit up her boss and her boss did have a property available. Her boss is really cool with um, basically her thing is that she wanted to have a thing to where people who were on the right track but made a mistake in their past and are trying to prosper can prosper. Like you get what I'm saying? Like she's not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to let a felon live in my property, especially especially if it's a felon who is working a fucking nine to five and is paying his rent on time, like type shit. So Daniel's mom's boss was just like, you know what? We're going to get you into this place. I have a place opening up in March. Like we're doing construction on it right now, but we could speed that shit up and I can get you guys in there. Like, don't worry about it. And once we got the green light, we filled out all the paperwork. Um, we ran everything uh, by everybody and everything was cool. We had a lease signed up. So then I gave um, my neighborhood the notice to vacate and that was that. Like it was set in stone. We were leaving and it was just such a relief because it's like now we could finally go someplace and like live in our truth. And it's like now you don't have to hand me money anymore. Like we can both give it to her. And if anything now I give him money and like he gives it to our landlord or whatever. Like I don't know. It just it's I don't know it's just like a dynamic shift that I really do like if that makes any sense like don't get me wrong I, I kind of am a control freak and I like being in charge of the bills but it just feels good that you know like Daniel can be more involved like he wants to be because when I got when we got this letter on the door he told me that he felt like he was holding me back like that he was a burden to me because of what he did in his past and I'm just like no dude like I love you and if this is what comes with you this is what comes with you um and we knew at some point that this was going to happen. We just thought we'd be able to thug it out until 2020 and you can get your shit expunged and everything would be cool. But shit, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. We moved into, we're in this place now and you don't have to hide. So here's the gag. The day, the last day of us moving out, um, we're all moving. It was, and we didn't get a moving truck or anything because this move was going to be so expensive. So expensive. We had to pay two times the rent at the retirement living neighborhood and then we also had to pay two times the rent to this place that we're in now and a lot of people were like oh how did this not mess up your credit blah 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 because the lease agreement that i signed with the retirement living was if i were to break my lease all i would have to do is pay two months rent not pay rent until somebody vacates the apartment because that's a fucking scam and that's how they keep getting your fucking money even when you don't live there anymore we both had to pay two months rent for two places and on top of that, it's freaking tax season, okay? Guys, I know some people out there might think YouTubers, we just sit in front of this camera and we're unemployed. No, bitch, we have to pay taxes. And this year was the most money I've ever made on YouTube because this is my first time being um, just doing YouTube from home. So I made a lot more money. Like, I'm not even gonna put my income out there, but let's just, I'm gonna just tell you guys straight up, I made, that $1,000 I made in the first month was not consecutive with um, the remainder of that year. So don't try to do no math, because I don't want y'all to know my pockets, but I'm gonna just let you guys know, I made four times as much than I did the previous year on YouTube. And those taxes, bitch, was higher than a motherfucker. Now, I always put money to the side so that I could pay my taxes, and I always try to invest as much as I can into, you know youtube or whatever you know we got us a new backdrop and there's more additions coming but it's just like that on top of having to pay taxes on top of having to pay these people on top of having to pay surgery costs i was just like 2019 is beating my fucking ass bitch like so i already made up my mind we're not getting movers like at first i did want to just get movers and just be like fuck it so we can have a smooth exit but daniel talked me out of it he's like look we're both about to pay a grip and you're about to have to pay the government, bitch. Like, let's just get it together. We can move this stuff by ourselves. So it was me, Daniel, his mom, his grandma, and Daniel's brother. And we all moved everything. And the move started. We started moving at 3 p.m. We did not get everything done until, like, maybe, like, 10 p.m. So we're, you know, going back and forth. We got the U-Haul. We're going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. So then finally the U-Haul shit is done. And then we go back to 
the retirement living apartment or whatever and Daniel's mom ordered pizza and you know we're all just chilling and the Daniel's niece is there also so Daniel's niece and Spody are running around right and it's mind you it was a I think the first was a Wednesday so it was a Tuesday at like 9 10 o'clock right and they're running around in the living room right and dude starts banging on the freaking ceiling and i'm like sir i know your snitch ass knows that we are moving today like bro what the fuck so we just ignore it we just all laugh about it because it was just like an ongoing joke of like oh uh, here comes the dude who's banging on the fucking ceiling with a broom like somebody's grandma slash auntie so we didn't really think anything of it so then we are done eating and then we continue to start moving stuff to the car like the little things to the car this is like the last wave of the move everything is going has been clean we're just moving the last stuff to the car so there is what me daniel daniel's mom daniel's grandma daniel's brother and a baby there's six of us going in and out the apartment right so this dude starts banging some more so you know just to be funny we start stomping on the ground back like dude stop like we're moving like we can't move quietly so now he's just like boom 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 like loud as fuck just banging on the door so daniel is like you know what fuck this shit like we're out this bitch now i don't give a fuck so daniel goes downstairs and he's like yo we're fucking moving stop banging on the fucking ceiling it's gonna be loud just shut the fuck up and if you have something to say just come upstairs we could talk about it and i and that was that right and not bang on the ceiling for the rest of the time we we're going shit back and forth like and i remember when i initially did the story time about bro and how he was banging on the on the ceiling with my dog i had this one girl in the comments talking about i was inconsiderate for getting a dog knowing that the floors were thin. Bitch, that neighborhood inconsiderate as fuck for not cementing the floors. I feel like it shouldn't be a tenant's responsibility of how the construction of the fucking place is. That place was 30 years old. I could even hear my other neighbors through the walls. Like, that. everything in that shit was thin. So, just, just fucking save it, bitch. I don't have no, like, literally, I understand because I was in that position before. I was on the first floor before, and I had people eight times stomping above my head. I get it. But it's just like, bro, you're either going to come up and talk. Because if he would have came out his house and talked to us, he would have realized that we're moving. Then it's the added on animosity to I have a hunch that you are the person that sent the kite out on us. Then it's just like, bro, this is the final day we're leaving and you're doing this shit. This is why I did not sign my lease. And when I told them, when I signed over my notice to vacate, when they put, what is your reason for leaving? I put neighbors because I'm like, bro, y'all need to really fix this situation. Like you really do. So boom, we move into here. It is really awesome. I love it here. I love our landlord. She's super cool. Her and her husband are really cool. They're very hands-on. They refurbish everything. Um, I love it. I love the bathrooms. I have like my own beauty room in here. We have like an actual studio for recording in there. Like it's just way beyond my expectations. I love the bedroom. I love that Spody has can run wherever she wants. And I really, really especially love that Daniel's name is on this lease and you know he has his own um gate code to get through the gate he has his own decal for his car he's like it's it doesn't feel like we're hiding anymore and that's why I wanted to tell this story to let anybody out there know like if you are experiencing this or like if you have a spouse who's experiencing this that there is a way to get pass that stigma and have a normal life and live a normal life and not get haunted by one mistake you made when you were younger there are people out there who will help you i highly 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 advise though getting in with a realtor so that you do not have to constantly be worried and looking over your shoulder and be like oh do they know does he know like did they notice me or you get what i'm saying because that was another thing i was like oh man my credit's gonna get fucked up like you i really feel like you should try to get into contact with a realtor like i feel like if i wouldn't have gotten to that argument with my grandma like i would have um actually spent a little bit more time on that but even when i was in the one bedroom one bath i did go to some open houses to get go directly through the landlord to get daniel in there but like i just kept getting outbidded every time by somebody so i was a little bit discouraged and then i moved into the retirement living or whatever so 
yeah, just please don't get discouraged. Please keep trying so that you don't have to live in hiding because unfortunately the way that the system is set up is like if you're a felon, you're just gonna be, you're only allowed to live in areas that would induce more criminal activity out of you if that makes any sense. Like the only place in Jacksonville where felons can live on paper, which like through an apartment that isn't like private like this is in the hood. And what the fuck you think is gonna happen in the hood? You're gonna get triggered. You're gonna do some shit. You're gonna have to protect your shit. If you're living in the hood, you wanna protect your house. You might go buy something that would violate you. Like you get what I'm saying? It's like systematic as fuck. That's basically why we moved is because we, I had, I did not have Daniel on my lease because he was convicted of a crime that he did years ago and because he violated like three years ago and yeah things are different now and it just sucks like we were both different people when we met each other and like it just is what it was and that is where we ended up and this is where we are now and we plan to live here for years to come until we buy our house so yeah this is just where we're gonna be at permanently for the time being anyway now that that's out the way, I'm going to tell you guys some of the cons about the place I was living at. So for one, I am not going to be saying the name of the apartment only because I feel like I should have read my lease. If I would have read my lease and I would have saw this shit where it was like, you can't have somebody for, for more than one consecutive days, I would not have signed the lease. Like... I have family that comes from out of town that comes and stays with me for more than one night. Like my dad, when he comes from out of town, he stays here with us. So it's just like, or like my little brother, like sometimes my brother would want to come over because he has friends at the beach. Like maybe it would be easier for him to stop by and like, you know, s sleep at my spot. Like that would not work for me to constantly have to check them in every fucking time. Like that's just no way to live in my opinion. And if I would have read that part, I would not have signed the lease and I would not have moved here. So that's why it's like, it's not completely their, it's not their fault. They were just doing their job and it just is what it is. Like, I got caught. Like, it just is what it is. I got caught. I was to blame. Oh, I wish I was taller. Like, if I was taller. Ooh, okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, here's some cons about the apartment. First con, obviously, that I keep on ranting and raving about is um, the thin floors and thin walls. You can hear everything and apparently everybody can hear us because Burke kept banging on the ceiling. I used to be able to hear music. I used to be able to hear people arguing through the walls. Like, shit was stupid. Um, the stand and shower, we had a stand and shower. That shit was fucking gross because all they would do was just paint over it. Like, within the month of January of 2019, we were there for what, five months at this time, four or five months at this time. And that's what I noticed, like paint was chipping off of there. And I saw like some grime shit. So yeah, no, then we started using the um, guest bathrooms tub instead of the sand and shower because that shit was gross. And that was something I actually had to take a video of and show it to them so they would not charge me for it because I'm like me living here for six months would not cause this type of grime looking shit like we paid way too much for that shit to be going on so that's number two um number three would have to be the washer and dryer were loud as fuck like they were so loud we had to actually buy a sound bar for the tv so that we could hear it because the damn washer and dryer were loud as fuck fuck and it's not just us other people in the reviews for the neighborhood say the same freaking thing um another thing that was loud was the ac unit that shit was loud as fuck it was so freaking loud like it just made no sense whenever the ac was on we would have to turn the sound bar on too because we just could not freaking hear um another thing that wasn't cool is the first week that we moved in there were like there was a fire ant problem we had to get the house bombed because we just kept getting bit by fire ants and i'm just thinking like so the dude that lived here before us was just cool with fire ants living here rent free like that doesn't make any sense um what else what else what else um lack of parking i already said that lack of parking that's pretty much it to be honest like i didn't really have much complaints the apartment looked beautiful um, the neighborhood was quiet. Um, they had a really big dog park. Like, that was really all my complaints. Like, if I was on the, I will wholeheartedly say that if Daniel could be on the lease over there for sure and no wasted application money, like for sure could be on the lease, I would be okay with staying there if I was on the first floor and 
they had more than one garage for sure because they had little vip spots but you had to pay for extra for that onto your rent as if you have an extra garage like what the fuck so oh and another thing i noticed like it's weird how they were so picky and choosy about that part of the lease about having people stay the night when another part on that lease is that you're not allowed to have um pit bulls or terrier mixes and whenever i walk spody at night that's when all the fucking pit bulls come out so it's okay if y'all do shit but okay mm. 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 but y'all i'm looking at the reviews everybody's saying the same thing um that the ac is really loud oh and another thing yes yeah, somebody did commit suicide in one of the apartments i just read that on here but i don't think that's necessary to um talk about yeah people are just saying washer is obnoxiously loud we can't watch tv with it running obviously can't sleep with it running and usually have to leave and run errands while it's running upstairs neighbors i'm sure loves it has a loud grinding knocking sound but they tell us it's normal for that machine I'm like, damn, like, mm. There is no light fixture in the ceiling fan in the second bedroom. Yeah, that's so true. That was so fucking annoying, dude. This this person says, you can hear everything your neighbors do. So somebody said, I hear every step my neighbors make. I hear the TV from other units, conversations. But all right, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it um, for this video. That's just why we moved. And if you guys have any more questions for us, just put them in the comments below on either of our videos. Like if you have questions for, Freddie, yeah, no, if you have questions for us, um, make it a comment, like respond to the pinned comment that I'm going to do. And if you'd like me and Daniel can do a Q and A sit down together about any of your questions on our couple channel. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, yeah, I will see you later. I'm just trying to think before I like turn the camera off like did I miss anything but that's pretty much it like I just want to explain all that shit and get it off my chest like because I noticed you guys would be like speaking of our couple channel you guys would be like oh you guys don't post on your channel anymore and blah 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 but it's because I used to follow I used to watch this one youtuber when I worked at Ratchet Corp and it was a girl who used to have her boyfriend over every once in a while and the leasing office actually found her on YouTube and watched her videos and saw that he was over all the time well to what it seemed like to them because again we only allow you to see what we want you to see so to them it looked like he was there all the time and they were just like he needs to be signed on her lease and she wouldn't do it because she wasn't in that point of the relationship yet to where she'd feel comfortable and they evicted her so that's why I really wasn't making as many couple videos with him that's why he really wasn't on my channel like that and that's why I really wasn't on his because I didn't know if they googled my name and found my channel but like Daniel's not like my on again off again ass boyfriend like we've been consecutively together for three years it's just I can't I was not able to broadcast him because I was scared that my leasing office was going to you know be like who is this nigga like this is our apartment and we would get cased up so yeah I just wanted to make that clear so we are going to be doing more couple channel videos and yeah okay I think I'm just going to wrap this up because this video is already super long let me know how you guys feel about the backdrop it's not done yet but yeah all right guys peace